So I I believe we can start already. Uh, quite a few people waiting for us. So hello everyone. Thank you very much for your time and your presence here at the Impact to Funds webinar. So I am Nuno Villar. I am your host uh, of the Impact to Fund and webinar. And uh, uh, today I will take you on a brief uh, introduction and presentation uh, of, uh, of the, the, the Golden Visa program and the, the Impact to Fund and what the Venture Capital Fund is. So for that, we have Impact to Capital and the two, part, two of the partners of the company. They will explain us a little bit more about what they have done and uh, uh, what is the role, what, what is their role in the company and uh, their future uh, investment strategy. We have also asked the, the, the fund manager uh, to, to explain us a little bit more about venture capital funds and what is their role into the impact, more specifically into the impact of fund. And we are also going to shed some light uh, on the Portuguese Golden Visa program or residence by investment. And we have invited uh, a law office uh, specifically for that purpose. So I, I would like to tell everyone that this session is being recorded and later on we can provide uh, the, the recording to any of our viewers. Uh, so I would also like to say to anyone that is watching, if you have any doubt or any question, uh, you can either uh, raise your hand, you can uh, use the chat room or the Q&A uh, to, 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 to clarify any doubt that might arise. We will try to uh, address those as fast as possible. So without any delay, I would like to start uh, with Impact of Capital, specifically Arturo. How are you, Arturo? Hey, no, no. How are you? I'm good. So, Arturo, please tell me a little bit more about yourself, what you've been doing, and uh, uh, what is your role into Impact of Capital? Sure. Uh, first, uh, thanks, everyone, to, uh, for taking the time to, to join this webinar. Hopefully, you can get some good insight in your decision-making process to move ahead with the with the investment and, uh, and to apply for the Golden Visa. Uh, my name is Arturo Gonzalez, as Nuno mentioned. I'm a partner at Impacto Capital. Uh, Impacto Capital is a real estate developer uh, with experience in uh, the US, Latin America, both in Colombia and Brazil, and uh, in Europe, in Portugal, okay? Uh, in 2013, uh, Impacto Capital uh, decided to expand these operations uh, to Europe, and we looked at, uh, we look at two countries. We look at uh, uh, Portugal and Spain, so uh, Southern uh, European countries. And uh, we saw an opportunity in the Portuguese market, specifically because we saw uh, some very strong fundamentals, both at a, at a national level and at a local level uh, that uh, we thought were very uh, were fit to dynamize the, the real estate market after the 2008 uh, crash, a real estate crash, which uh, you know, obviously, for Portugal and and and, and Spain, it was uh, it was uh, you know it was tough. It was uh, very tough. Uh, just to mention a couple of the fundamentals that that we saw, uh, you know, that change uh, in that in that time period. The first one, uh, very important, is the government changed the the rental law, where they provided a mechanism for the landlords, for the owners of the assets, to increase the rents. Of the of the of the of the real estate, okay. Before uh, specifically for residential, okay. Before 2012, uh, the process was very tough for you to uh, update the rent. The rent. So while you if you you've been to to Lisbon, you can see uh, there's a lot of the old buildings in the in the old city center are run down. That's because prior to that date, uh, you you weren't able to update the rents. Therefore, you wouldn't, you didn't invest into the into the into the asset. Uh, the second one, uh, uh, they uh, it's a, some fiscal uh, some fiscal incentive uh, that were put both at a local and a national level as well. And I think the most important one is the VAT. So they reduced the VAT for urban rehabilitation projects from twenty three percent, which is the, the 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 rate for most every, everything in Portugal, to six percent. So obviously that's a that's big savings there on the on the on the constructions on the construction of urban rehabilitation, and then the third one is a it's a countrywide uh, programs 
to bring in foreign, foreign direct investments, okay? Basically, uh, the Golden Visa program, obviously uh, very targeted to the real estate market, and also a, a program called Non-Habitual Tax Resident, which basically uh, allowed for international, uh, international people to move into Portugal, uh, live in Portugal, and uh, get a, a reduced tax rate on their income from a, a, from in, on, on their income from outside of Portugal. Obviously, what that does is it brings people they wanted to move to Portugal, and when people move to Portugal, they either buy or rent or 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 uh, or they have they need a place to to live. Okay, so I think that those those three funda those fundamentals made made us the, make us uh, move to Portugal as as an investment as an investment uh, location. Uh, since 2014, we have completed over 130 units, uh, both in Porto and Lisbon. You know? So that's a little bit of background of who Impacto Capital is and, uh, and, who, and uh, who am I. Okay? Thanks, Arturo, for, for that insight. It's, it's quite uh, interesting to, to see that. And, and many of our viewers uh, probably did, were not aware about uh, how the economic and the political situation uh, on, on the country has changed in these last 10 years. So, Fabio, uh, now please tell us a little bit more about yourself and what do you think will be the future uh, investment strategies of Impacto Capital? Okay, hello, Nuno. Uh, thanks very much um, for everybody to be here today. It's really a, a pleasure to be with you guys uh, this afternoon. For some of you, it's still morning. Um, but anyway, talking a little bit about myself, I'm one of the co-founders of Impacto Capital. Um, before I co-founded Impacto, uh, I used to work in the financial sector. Um, I had the opportunity to work in Latin America, in Europe, uh, in the US. And before I moved back to Portugal several years ago, I, I, I was living uh, in Boston for, for 10 years working uh, in the financial sector um, and, and starting some, some new business over there. Uh, the reason why uh, we believe in the future of you know, the Portuguese market and more specifically, the Portuguese real estate there are a lot to do with Arturo already mentioned. The, the foundation that we see here in the market, uh, it's quite strong. Um, I don't think like he, uh, we are just starting to see the potential for the Portuguese market. We can talk about, when we think about future, we can talk about how stable this country is if we think like uh, politically, um, uh, in terms of, you know, very, very safe uh, uh, in environment. And if, when you also see that a lot of the major players, even like global pay players, start to come to Portugal and start to perform some transactions, this gives us the confidence that the market are going to stick um, to this growth trend that we've been observing for the last, you know, five to, to, to eight years. So talking specifically about Impacto, uh, we've already acquired more than, than you know, we, we acquired at this point 11 projects. We are working on several others. All of these projects, we completely finished eight of them. Uh, we have like eight of, eight, eight of them uh, that we finished construction that are completely sold out and several others that are in, you know, in different states at this point. Some of them are under construction. Uh, some others are in the license and designing process. There are some others that are about to start construction. And as Arturo, Arturo mentioned, uh, in terms of you know, principles for us to, to, to go ahead with the investment, we really favor like prime location. Uh, uh, the, the, the entirety idea behind the investment guideline for us and, and, and the fund try to, to, to follow is to really invest in prime location, make sure that she, every single investment has the capacity to generate cash flow. So even if you thinking about you know, a crisis for a moment like we just had with the pandemic, 
or now that we are seeing some disturbance here um, in Europe, if we are investing in assets that have the capability to generate cash flow, it's much easier to, you know, to overcome any obstacle that might uh, 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 happen along the way. So uh, that is like the strategy that we, that we try to, to, to follow in terms of investment. I'm sure that I'm gonna have the opportunity to go a little bit deeper with you guys about talking about our pipeline. But right now, what I can tell you is that she, you know, we as a company, we really proud ourselves uh, of our capacity to originate uh, uh, new deals. I think you know there are there are uh, some other core values that we have in our organization. But if I have to 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 pick one in terms of business. I really think the way that we invest in our origination team, the way that we analyze you know, multiple deals, several deals every single week, the way that we connect with multiple source to, to bring those deals for us, it's what really makes you know, the difference. Because you know, when you guys think about invest in a venture, venture capital fund that intend to invest in projects, it's really important to understand the, the capabilities that those funds are gonna have to deploy their capital. And, and in our case, I can tell you that our projects are always ahead of, of our fundraising. So for instance, we don't wait to raise funds in order to go after any specific project. We are, you know, constantly looking for good opportunities in the market. And if there is an opportunity that match our investment criteria, that is the moment that we go after and try to understand what's gonna be the optimal capital stack for that specific project. Because we really believe that if you have a good project, we always gonna have uh, a way to fund uh, 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 good projects. So. In that sense, I can tell you that right now we have much more projects that we have uh, uh, capital to deploy, which is a good thing, which is like, uh, uh, in my opinion, it's better to have uh, you know, a very strong pipeline and then you, know, you just keep filling the blanks in terms of you know, funding then start to raise more funds that you actually have the capability to deploy or being forced to deploy the capital in a, in, in a rush, let's put in this way. But you know, summarizing uh, what we think about the future in Portugal for the real estate, we still believe that there is a huge opportunity for development here. Um, we feel that uh, the yield market, so the, that, that kind of deals that you buy, you know, uh, retail stores and, 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 and supermarkets and things like that in order to get a new, it's gonna become very competitive uh, because we see that the major players around the world are coming after those kind of assets. So we think it's gonna be, um, it's gonna happen but it's gonna be a lot of competition and the competition you know, brings the price up and consequently the yield, it's gonna be a little bit uh, lower. We really think that in the development space, mainly in the residential because of the, the, the stock that we have for residential in the country, it's still a huge opportunity because one other dynamic that she, it's worth to comment with you guys. When you think about residential, it's not about to find like a, the right plot or the right building to do the, the refurbishment. Um, in countries like ours, you need to go to a very length process for licensing because everything here is old. Everything here has some kind of you know, protections and, and, and regulations that you know, uh, forces you 
in terms of what you can do and what you cannot do in a specific um, building. So that process, it can take a lot of time. So for this reason, have a strong pipeline, be ahead of your fundraising. It's always a good thing uh, to a venture capital fund. But I probably already talked too much, Nuno, so no, no, let no, me no. No, bring it, makes, it back to you. It makes sense what you are saying because uh, I, I agree with you. And uh, one thing that we saw from COVID was that uh, you can close the, the shops, you can close the offices, but by the end of the day, everyone needs a place to be and residential properties are specifically for that pur purpose. So it makes a lot of sense your argument. But Arturo, coming back to you, so you were saying back then that you, we sold more than, we sold more than uh, uh, 130 properties. Uh, could you please shed some light on, the, on those properties? Uh, we are going to share a presentation with that. So, oops. Right, so moving to, to the first property, uh, Nuno. Uh, this is uh, the first building that we acquired here in Lisbon in 2014. This is a, a 18th century building located in the Baixa a neighborhood of Lisbon. Uh, so here, uh, what you can see is uh, we had to maintain uh, the facade and a lot of the, 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 the interior. Uh, you had to do some, some sort of uh, restoration, okay? Uh, this is uh, 13 residential units and two retail stores. Uh, as, 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 as Fabio mentioned, we've already exited, exited this, this deal. Currently, uh, the, the owners are, are operating the asset uh, in the short and medium term. Okay, So they, they're getting a yield, basically, out of, of the investment that they made when they acquired the asset from us. Okay, moving to the, to the next one. Sorry. Okay, this is a, a, an asset located in the same, the same neighborhood as, as the one before. Okay, as you can see, it's also a, an 18th century building that we uh, did the, the restoration. This is a larger asset, okay? And, and, and this one, what, what, I, what I, I mentioned is uh, we had to maintain, uh, besides the facade, we had to maintain the stairs uh, because there were, and the entrance, it's a big, really big whole, whole entrance. So here a lot of, a lot of attention to detail in this in this restoration. Okay, uh, it's uh, it's currently also being operated. In, it's also being rented uh, uh, in the residential market. Okay, and but we we've already exited. We already sold these assets. Next one. Uh, this is a smaller size. It's in a it's in between Seattle. Seattle. It's a very well known uh, residential neighborhood in 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 Lisbon and the Portuguese Assembly. Uh, uh, this was our, our third project. It's, uh, it's uh, only uh, eight residential units and a retail store. Uh, we, uh, at the beginning, we're, we were a little bit worried about the retail, but what we saw is there's a lot of foot traffic going from Shadow to uh, tourism, going from Shadow to, to the assembly. So uh, currently there's a coffee being operated there and I think it's doing quite well. We sold it, we sold the, the whole building as well. Next one, uh, this is a, a newer facade compared to, to the ones that we just saw. Uh, this is located in what's called the Avenidas Novas, right next to El Corte Inglés, one of the largest shopping malls in a, the, the city center of, of Porto, uh, I'm sorry, of Lisbon. Uh, this was done what, by Miguel Saraiba, which is, a, I, I would say, the largest uh, architectural uh, uh, office here in, in Portugal. And we actually met uh, Miguel in a project we did in Bogota, in an office project we did in Bogota. Okay, so we, we, this is the first project that we work with him here in, in, uh, in Lisbon. Uh, now, Avenida Flats, uh, this is an asset that uh, what, uh, from our point of view, it's a, it's a very good location. It's about a hundred meters from the Avenida Liberdade. Uh, for, for those of you that have visited uh, Lisbon, uh, you probably know this, this uh, because it's, a, it's the avenue that goes from Marques de Pobal to Baixa, where all the, you know, you have all the big retail stores. You have uh, Louis Vuitton, you have Cartier, you have, uh, you know, all the big ones. So this is a, an asset where, 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 where the location was probably the, the main reason why we made the investment. Uh, now coming to Shadow Flats, this is the same building that you see here on, on my background. Uh, this asset we acquired from the Portuguese government in an auction. 
Uh, we the thing that I like to mention about this one is you can see here in this that there's there this is the top floor. So basically these apartments. What we did here is we we uh, we we did the the we basically took out the older roof. We did a new roof with a small with a lighter with a lighter uh, structure and we created duplexes. So these these apartments have uh, are are used as, as duplexes. So you have the room uh, on the top floor and then the the uh, you know the, the kitchen and the living room in in the in the in the in the ground floor. Okay. Uh, the next asset is, is called Principal Real Residence. This is an asset located in the Principal Real neighborhood, which is a very, it's very hip and chic neighborhood of, of Lisbon. Uh, the, the, the thing that made us at the end of the day, why we, the, the most, the, the, the thing that we like the most about this asset is the view, okay? You can see here uh, the view, it's basically, uh, it, it, you can see the Liberty Avenue and then some of the apartments uh, to the right of the building, they can they also have views of the castle and views of the of the river, okay, of the Tagus River. Uh, this was in 2018. Uh, we decided to to make our first investment in the city of Porto. This was the first asset that we acquired there, uh, and and uh, the 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 investment thesis be, behind going to Porto was. There was a, a, a the difference in, in, in price per square meter between Lisbon and Porto uh, historically has been around 20 to 25 percent, and in 2018 you were seeing difference of up to 60 percent. So we saw uh, an investment thesis where the price it would start to catch up, uh, and we acquired uh, three assets at the same time. This was the first one. Uh, this picture here on the right, it's an actual picture of the of the. Of the furniture that uh, we've put in into into the apartments, we sold these apartments fully furnished, as you can see uh, in the picture to the right. Okay, Arturo, I think uh, that's it. Uh, thank you so much for your insight. So basically, these projects they have been so in back to capital started to invest in these projects since what 2014. 2014. 2014. Yeah, 2014. Yeah. So nearly eight years of investment. So that's quite a, a, a nice track record. In the last eight years, eight projects finished. Uh, it's a very efficient, efficient uh, rate. So Fabio, um, now coming to you, uh, could you please shed some light on the new projects that Impact Capital is going to 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 launch into the market, and what are the the, the future projects? So what you have right now for sale and uh, what will be the next projects into the pipeline? Sure, no, no. So this project that you guys are seeing here is, is Palacio da Fervenza. Uh, this is um, a project that has a very nice location. It's just like their, their view is amazing. It's to the, you have a, an abstracted view to the Douro River and you are just like a walking distance to all of the, the wineries. So it's it's really interesting region. I think only in Portugal, in this specific wine region, that you can go from one winery to the other walking. So usually, you know, if you go to Bordeaux, or if you go to Spain, or if you go to Napa Valley, you have to visit the winery is going to one place to the other and you always have to take a car. But here in Portugal, in the north, there is this specific situation where, you know, the vineyards, they are down the river, but all the vintage process, all the storage of the wine happens exactly in the same place. So the wines go above, uh, come uh, from the river and they are stored uh, in this in this um, neighborhood, where you can find all the main wineries. So imagine yourself uh, going from one winery to the other, and they are actually there for hundreds of years. So this is a, a, a very special location. Then when we decide to come to to Porto and start to do investment there, we really saw these investment is that you know this is a place where you can really, really uh, uh, explore uh, for development. Since we start the investment, uh, they already open, you know, a, 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 a very nice 
you know, space that is called World of Wine, where you can find museums, where you can find like 10 different restaurants. So this is, this is really, uh, as you can see ourselves talking, we really thinking about location. For us, uh, the location of the asset, uh, it's, it's, it's really something that we have to be comfortable with and we always have to find our anchor for that specific uh, investment. And, and beyond that, the, the building is just beautiful. No? You look to that balcony and it's just like a, an amazing, an amazing view. If yeah. we keep moving. Yeah, no, that, no. Just to say the building is, is, is stunning and it seems to be the ideal place for a wine lover. And right now it's under construction. We are, you know, we are uh, probably one year to, 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 we have one year more of construction uh, it's really nice to see you know that we just keep the facade and everything else it's like it's a brand new building so you have all the feeling of you know being entering a palace but at the same time you have all the comfort of new amenities and and new uh, facilities and everything so if we keep moving this is palacio da marquesa this is another palace in the in the in the city of porto this is really, you know, uh, well located in the central uh, location, just like a two minutes walking to the to the bridge that is one of the city postcards, or to the main station, main train station that you, actually not a lot of trains goes there anymore, but it's it's really beautiful and it's in the in the in the middle of the the, the city. If we and this one. We're gonna start construction uh, hopefully next month. They keep telling me that you know that the prices are going up, that you know some challenge that they are having, but uh, you know we are fine. We've seen that before, and we know that the only way to create value is to build something. And we're gonna start to build uh, this one next month. This one is a it's 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 another. Uh, recent acquisition. Uh, we just bought this building in December last year. This is um, in Lisbon. Uh, the bridge and the river that you are seeing on your right is the view that you're going to have um, from this building. And this building um, used to be a hospital. So we, we, we bought this building from a health company. Um, and, and, and now we are working to finalizing some design uh, of the building. So the building is a red license, which is you know, fantastic. So we, we don't have to have a discussion with the municipality if we can do residential, how many apartments and anything like that. So this is gonna be a 45 uh, apartment units. Um, but as soon as we look to, 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 to this asset, we saw something that was not in the project that we really believe that's gonna make a huge difference. And it's the rooftop of this building. This building has a flat rooftop and, and the elevator already gets there. So you actually have very good access to the rooftop from the inside the building. And before we buy the building, the, the, the architects and the engineers, they were using this rooftop to put technical equipment. So basically, one of the, the major changes that we are being, bringing to, to, to this project is to redefine the technical specification of the equipments, bring them uh, throughout the, the floors and free up the space of the rooftop and put a swimming pool and a living area for the people to, to, to enjoy. Because even now, become more evident that people are looking for residential units that bring like a, some new concept that was not exactly uh, there before. So for instance, all of the apartments here, uh, if they are a two bedroom or three bedroom apartment, they are always gonna have a micro office in the apartment. So if people want to work remotely, they can, they can do that uh, without sacrifice, sacrifice an entire bedroom of the apartments. So they, they, they also are looking for, you know, outdoor space. 
So we always look to find like balconies or things like that, like the rooftop that you can go there and enjoy your coffee and read your book um, if you want to. And with this amazing view, even more relevant, no? Yeah, absolutely. If we, if we just keep moving. So this one is, is another project that we're working. This one is still in the licensing process. Um, it's it's, it's a, a long process because it's very close to, to, to the ocean. So there is a lot of other things that we have to pay attention here. A lot of institutions have to say something during the, the, the licensing. Um, but we are very confident that this is going to be a successful project because we've already made like a partnership with the university next door. So, and the, uh, basically we have going to have a protocol with the postgraduate school uh, the postgraduate school, they intend to use the units that we're going to build here uh, for professors or for international students that are going to come and want to do like short term uh, uh, training in, in, the, in the university. This is for the medical school, the postgrad of the medical school uh, next door. And it's not here, but we are also working in a project very close by, which is much larger scale. Um, it's going to be a, a, a five-star uh, uh, branded residence. And, and just to give you an idea, in terms of uh, sales price, we are talking about a project that goes around 200 million euros in terms of, of sales. Just to give you a sense that uh, although we work in small and medium projects, we also uh, um, are very active in much larger scale projects, which gives us a huge advantage because when we are, when we are negotiating with construction firms or with, when we are negotiating with providers, we have uh, uh, this network and the scale uh, to force them uh, a little bit um, in terms of you know, control the price, control the, 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 the SLAs, and, and all of those those things. Okay, Fabio, thank you for, for that insight about uh, the pipeline of Impacto Capital. So now I would uh, like to, to go to our next guest, Diogo Pont from Stag Fund Management. So Diogo, uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself and what uh, something about Stag, please. Okay, uh, thank you very much and good afternoon all. Thank you for, for being uh, invited to speak today. Um, so I'm head of uh, investments of, of STEG. Um, STEG is a, is a fund manager that belongs to the Scart Group, a group that exists uh, for 50 years. Um, and uh, the license uh, for uh, managing uh, private equity and venture capital funds. Uh, we are uh, regulated by the Portuguese regulator um, and uh, we are managing uh, seven funds uh, and approximately uh, 150 million euros uh, of assets under management. Um, even we are uh, quite new in the market, uh, we have already raised those those funds uh, and the, we have uh, more than 500 investors, uh, which uh, is a pleasure and also a responsibility uh, to have uh, all this uh, confidence and uh, that investors has, have given to us in the in the different funds and we also uh, have been awarded um, as the best new private equity uh, fund manager by um, the global banking and finance uh, magazine uh, excellent yoga so 500 clients that's that's a lot so clearly this shows that uh, the, the venture capital funds as a way of investing is, is getting increasingly popular. Can you shed some light why international investors like this option so much? So much? Uh, there are several reasons. Uh, I would say uh, two main. Uh, first is the management team uh, and the partnership that here you have in place. So uh, investors and people that want to allocate their money uh, to receive to appreciate capital and, the, and this specific fund as, a, as a also a bonus of being eligible for, for golden visa purpose. Um, but the management 
uh, that you have is that uh, you have a professional team managing your, your assets, so your money. So in, instead of you uh, or investors that are not professional on, on this industry, you count with the team from Stag and the track record, the extensive track record uh, from Artur and Fabio and from Impact Capital team on deploying uh, your money, uh, finding and investing and returning uh, in the best way possible. So first, first I would say a professional management team. And the second um, main reason that could be much more, but I would just focus on these two main, is this is very tax efficient vehicle. So also, if you want to buy by yourself these kind of assets, that also you would need scale to do it, uh, because with, with one of investment money, is very difficult to buy these opportunities that you need scale. Um, and these vehicles are tax efficient. So uh, also from an investor point of view, uh, is much more efficient to invest through uh, an investment fund, a private equity investment fund, than by yourself buying properties, paying all the taxes and all the burden that, that you have uh, on a standalone basis. So, so I would focus on this much, much more uh, advantage that you have, but I would stay here. for. So regarding the tax efficiency, it's fair to say that the, the clients that invest into a venture capital fund, specifically in the case of the impact fund, they lock up their entire costs or the total investment just in the beginning and after that they will not have any sort of taxes or expenses correct so there are no withholding tax uh, on the income distributed to to clients so that's why it's very tax efficient and yeah. unless you this is for non-offshore uh, investors okay. uh, this this tax efficiency it makes it very simple the investment not to have anything attached to it so um so tell me specifically, what is the role of the fund manager into the impact of fund? What is your specific role? So this is a partnership, as I, as I explained, with the with impact to team, but STEG uh, is the entity that is licensed by the regulator. What it means, it means that in terms of compliance, in terms of risk, and in terms of investment decisions are taken by uh, STEG team. Um, and uh, the investors, uh, if the investors, they, we are the point of contact through the investors. In terms of investments, what we do with this partnership is that Impact to Team uh, selects and advise and propose investments, and then we together structure a way, the best way possible for uh, getting the best proposal for, for investors uh, in terms of risk return mitigation so try to mitigate the risks and try to obtain always the best uh, return possible uh, covering uh, the risks that we consider so this is basically a partnership where uh, we are the entity uh, regulated and reporting to, to the regulator and also to, to the investors and more specifically about the impact of fund, what are the, the main characteristics such as a subscription period uh, what is the target uh, uh, the, the target uh, fund, fund size of, of the fund? So the fund is still under fundraising. So the fund started last year. So this year is still under fundraising. Uh, this is um, a seven year, uh, an eight year fund. So it will be live till uh, 2029. Um, and we are, as, as uh, uh, Fabio and Arturo already explained, we are and the fundraising, but already investing the, the investors capital. So we are, and since we uh, impact, we has been developing a lot of projects in this pipeline. We are also in between these two phases, still raising capital, but already deploying investment investors money uh, into uh, very good projects uh, like the one that, that you've seen. So, and the target size fund is uh, 25 million. Um, there's still some room uh, for, for investors, um, and this is the fund can close uh, if reach is already the 25 or uh, during the period. But there is still some 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 room, but uh, we are very confident that we will reach the maximum amount of, of the fund. Okay. So Fabio, thank you, Diogo, for your time. Uh, Fabio, um, in a brief way, could you please explain us? Uh, the structure of the impact fund. What is the main differentiator? What is the proposition value of the fund itself? Oh, no, no. I think like 
in a, in a short way to view that is we understood from our clients that they were looking for an option where they would invest in a venture capital fund, but the, fa- the venture capital fund would deploy their capital in a more conservative way. So what would be, uh, how, how is that? So basically the fund only invests into projects that there is a tangible collateral behind. So there is, they always gonna have some kind of building or real estate asset behind the investment. That is the first point. The second one is almost all, all, all of the investment, basically what we try to do is 90% of the investment in each project goes in a debt format, which means the fund arrange in the beginning of the transaction a specific interest rate and make sure that they have priority on cash flow. So whatever happens with that project, if the project goes better than expect, or if the project goes not as good as we expect, the first one to get paid, it's going to be the debt. It's going to be the fund. It works like the banks uh, 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 work when you are you know, trying to buy your house. In that way, we, we believe that it's much better for our investors to not have like us play around with their funds, trying to get some upside here and there. We try to play a more safe, safer approach where we say, okay, this is the project. We believe in the asset. We believe in the location. You, we want to fund this business plan, but we're going to be the first to get paid back uh, uh, when the project starts to perform. So basically, that is the general principle, Nuno. That is okay. the way that we try to, to, to organize uh, uh, their investment. So if, if somebody is looking for you know, an opportunity to invest in a fund like that, but they want to take less risk of, you know, if they compare with other venture capital funds, I definitely think that it's a very, very good option. I tend to say that uh, our fund really shines when you start to run stress scenarios. So if for some reason the, the Portuguese market doesn't keep going up or if it remains like uh, uh, stable or even if the project doesn't perform as we expect, that is the moment that this fund is going to shine because the structure of the investment, first of all, protects the, 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 the capital deployed from the fund. Thank you, Fabio, for your insight. So without further ado, thank you for waiting, Flip. And let us know a little bit more about yourself and what you do. So many of our clients, uh, the, their main purpose of investor of investment is to get their golden visa. So talk uh, a little bit more about yourself and what you have been done in these last years in the yeah. golden visa market. Thank you, Nuno. So my name is Filipe Eusebio. I'm a lawyer partner of a law firm here in uh, Lisbon called Ana Bruno uh, uh, Yesiadj. And um, I mean, uh, I've, we've of course been working in the Golden Visa since 2012, since the very beginning of the of the program. We've always been uh, exposed internationally as a law firm, and it was somehow coherent and very easy going for us to uh, grab on to this uh, process of onboarding the clients in the program. But to be honest, I've been working with immigration since I was a trainee lawyer, so I still remember my first client that was assigned to me was Miss Krasium from Moldova. So for me, the, the immigration is always um, uh, very em- emotional and, uh, in the underlying reason on people to, to, to get on to these programs. And we try never to dis- dissociate that, even though we're talking about an investment program, from everything that motivates that decision, from the ability to freely enter the Schengen visa to ultimately we have lots of clients in that circumstance who want to uh, move, shift into Portugal or into Europe, and the Golden Visa is the perfect uh, setting uh, for that. Um, so we're very keen on working on it. We've onboarded uh, hundreds of clients into the program, and uh, it's been a pleasure to, to be honest because we've, we're changing people's lives, and not many times lawyers can say that. That, yeah. <laughs> so, Philippe, in your professional uh, uh, experience, 
uh, what uh, basic conditions must be met from the investors to apply for the golden visa process? So the law is very specific about that, about the, the, requirements, the requirements you must have. So first and foremost, everything starts with the famous NIF, which is the Portuguese tax, tax ID number, which is a quick registration we do um, in the vast majority of the cases, declaring the client as a non-resident in Portugal. But in any case, uh, a, a NIF or a tax ID will be granted to the client, which is pretty much a sequence of nine numbers. Why is it so relevant? Because without that number, you cannot proceed to step two, which is um, opening a local bank account. So according to the Golden Visa law, all investments made in, or, in order to be qualifiable as Golden Visa investment must be made through Portuguese bank accounts. So first step, tax ID, second step, opening a bank account. And uh, then from that, that bank account, deploying the investment, in this case, purchasing the, uh, the participation units of the fund. Um, and uh, once we have that step finalized, along with a criminal record of the client and a statement from the management entity, STAG, and the bank saying that the client has deployed that, that money to do this purchase and that the client has used its own monies from the, the local bank account, we submit the application to SEF which is the, the name of the immigration authority here in Portugal. Okay, so now on a more personal uh, basis, why do you think the, the, the program has been so successful? So why do we see so many uh, foreign investors coming to Portugal to invest? Yeah, well, it may seem I'm a, I'm a, a real estate guy, but uh, first and foremost, lo location. Because um, <laughs> because the thing is that uh, we've been ex ex extremely lucky. So if we go back uh, to 10 or 12 years um, to the Portugal we were back then, uh, I'm still today surprised on how we've been able to flip the country, attract tourists and, uh, and uh, maintain the, 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 that level of attractiveness internationally. I think several uh, factors contributed to that. Of course, the Golden Visa was a big impulse, the, the energy HR program as well. And ultimately, the fact that the world in itself has became a very, uh, became a very unstable place and Portugal has been able to maintain in terms of safety, political stability, stability of the, of the taxation system, a very steady pace. Uh, allowing uh, people that would never think of uh, Portugal as a destination uh, to have a look at it, try it, taste it, because our food is amazing, uh, spend some time here. And um, what I've been noticing, because I've been welcoming a lot of international clients, uh, is that uh, it starts with the idea of the golden visa. As you know, the golden visa only requires you to be uh, seven days, an average of seven days per year in Portugal. But then it becomes a plan. So I have clients that started with a golden visa, made their visit to Portugal, and are now thinking on effectively shifting to Portugal, given the environment that we have and all the facilities, the highways, the infrastructure, the communication systems were really uh, uh, top notch in all those um, infrastructures. And uh, I'm, just to give you a practical example, I have I am now welcoming a lot of uh, the so-called digital nomads shifting into the country, working here as if they were in their in their country. So the attractiveness, I think, will come from the fact that uh, the, the country in itself has been very stable, a very safe place. And um, I would I would point out those two other than, of course, the food and the sun and the fact that we all speak English and we're generally very friendly people. Okay. Thank you, Philippe, so much for your insight. So uh, I believe that's pretty much it about all, all, the, all the, the, the people that join us in, into this webinar. Now, we have a few questions from some of our viewers uh, that I would like just to, to completely make it uh, clear for everyone uh, watching. So one of our viewers asked us, uh, what are the fees of the impact effect? Anyone that wants to answer this question? So basically, uh, we are talking about the subscription fee here is 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 only twenty five hundred, um, and that's it. So the entirety of the fees is only two thousand five hundred euros. 
That's two. That's the, the fee that you pay to to uh, to to make the investment. Now there there's ongoing fees. Okay, uh, there's a management two percent management fee that's uh, that's ongoing uh, during the during the the uh, the eight years of the of the of the fund. Okay, uh, and, and I, there's there's some other there's some other uh, smaller fees like a, a custodian bank fee. Uh, but we can we can no no to, to that question we can give them a breakdown of, of all the fees but the major one is the two thousand five hundred that you pay at, at the beginning and the two percent management fee that you paid you paid uh, a, a annually okay and that two percent that that two percent comes from from the thirty five three hundred from the investment you make at the beginning. Okay, so it doesn't come from uh, uh, the client does not pay annually two percent, correct? No. Yeah, I think I think like let's be clear. What is the out of the 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 package for the client? So basically, the out of the package for the client is twenty five hundred in the beginning for the subscription fee. This fee is paid for the fund manager to perform KYC to prepare all the documentation, all of those things for them to make their investment. On top of that, the 500,000 euros that they're going to invest in the fund in order to qualify for the Golden Visa program. So that is the only out of pocket. Everything else, it's going to happen within the fund, and the fund is going to perform investment to overcome those costs during the, the, the life of the fund. So I mean, another question. To, just to add on, so investors uh, will then receive uh, their return uh, during the life of the fund and at the end, already net of those costs. So uh, at the investor's level, only the interest fee and then all the fees will be due, uh, inside of the fund. So all the returns and the expectations are net of, of these costs that are the costs of management of, of the fund. So. Okay. So we have another question, and I think this one this one is for you, Philippe. So can the investor reunite with the family under the same investment? And uh, does he need to have uh, a fiscal residence here in Portugal? Uh, so yeah, uh, so the reunification process is uh, possible uh, um, uh, in the, to, to, to the following members of the family, the, the spouse, uh, and for that, we need to show uh, uh, proof of marriage, like a marriage certificate, and, uh, and not not only underage children, so underage children as well, but even over 18, they may, as long as we can still prove dependency of the kids, uh, meaning that we'll, we'll, we can show that they're studying, and um, and through that route, we can, we can grant a golden visa with just one single investment from the main applicant, okay? No need to, in, to further invest. And um, there's all, also the option of granting the, the golden visa to dependent parents. Uh, and for such, we will also need to prove the, the dependency of, of the parents. Regarding the sec second question on the, on the tax representation, effectively, when you, when you apply for a tax ID, if you're not granting the tax authorities a local um, address, which is the vast majority of cases, you need to appoint a tax representative in the country. Lots of um, accountants, uh, lawyers, Lawyers are providing that service uh, through normally through an annual fee that would cover the costs of uh, receiving a correspondence, letting you know what's uh, what, what what the tax authorities are asking for, uh, if they ask for anything along the way. So yeah, tax representative is mandatory by the time we apply for a tax ID without a local tax uh, address um, designated for the for the client. Okay. Thanks, Philip. So we have also another question, which is, what is the minimum investment into the impact of fund? The minimum investment is going to be 350,000 euros. Um, and that's it. OK. Um, so I also have another question, which is, what happens if the companies where the fund have invested do not repay back to the fund? Can you repeat, Shino? So what happens if the companies where the fund makes its investments um, do not uh, repay back it to the fund? The fund is going to have uh, the right to execute the asset because we always have uh, an underlying asset behind the investment. If, if the fund doesn't get paid back, 
they're gonna have the powers to you know to 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 basically to sell to force the sale of the asset and 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 get their money back for this reason it's so important that we always have this real estate collateral behind the investment okay um I think that's pretty much all the questions that we got from our viewers. Uh, I don't know if any uh, of you want wish to say anything left. No, no, I think it was it was a pleasure to 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 uh, to spend um, this hour here with all of you, and I really encourage you guys to reach out to us to clarify further doubts. I think like if you have any problem. Uh, trying to understand uh, the Golden Visa program. I'm sure that Philippe is more than happy to assist you guys. If you want to understand better how the funds uh, and, and, and these kind of vehicles are regulated, I'm sure Diogo is the right person to talk with you. And if you want to know more about you know, uh, our team, our projects, or if you are about to visit Portugal, we always you know, invite you guys to visit one of our projects. I think it's the best way to get the sense of what we are doing. Okay, I think that's it. So thank you everyone out there for watching today's webinar. Uh, and if you have any questions, if you want to 